Hello guys and welcome to a new war game video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you a 4 vs 4 on 38th parallel and today I'm playing once again with Sega 1, Wolvata and Jumpy. Today we're playing against Viper 2-1, Hot Rod 5d5, Osama and Charles Murray. Okay, today I'm making use of a German mechanized deck. One deck that I actually have really sort of fallen in love with. It's a really interesting deck to use and makes use of one of my favorite tanks, of course, the KPZ Kyla. It comes with a lot of APCs with their infantry, including the Marda series, so the Marda 1, the Marda 1A2, the Marda 1A3. And then you've also got uh, interesting AA units like the FRP Roland 3s which are extremely powerful. You've also got the Flak Panzer Gepard A1, then also the A2 version, I think, that comes with the infrared missile as well, which isn't very useful. I normally only take the A1 because it's cheaper and you don't need the extra infrared missile. But uh, let's just go over quickly our strategy for today. You can see that Wall is going to take over on the left and support and secure the left flank. Then I've got myself going to hit the middle with my heavy armor strategy. Then we've got Jumpy on the right. And then Sega 1 will be taking uh, Kilo and India with the help of Wall. And basically, I say heavy armor. It wasn't supremely heavy armor because this mechanized deck only has up to the Leopard 2A1 in terms of heavy armor, which isn't very heavy in comparison to something like a Challenger 2 or a Leopard 2A5 or even a... M1A2 Abrams. So it isn't as powerful against enemy tanks as you may think, but it is a amazing combined force deck. If we jump into my point of view, we can start to have a look about what I'm bringing in at the beginning. Now, something that I haven't actually mentioned before is the fact that you can delete your command vehicle at the start of the game if you place another command vehicle in its place. So at the start of this game, I had an Iltis Kado, which is a command jeep, which is obviously unarmored. I also have the Leopard 1, though, command tank on my deck, and I wanted to bring this in at the beginning of the game instead because I was going to be contesting Echo against the enemy. Now Echo is the only contested sector on this map so I need to make sure that I have a command vehicle that's going to be able to survive a bombing strike because it's likely that they will try and snipe it during the game. So that's why I replaced the Iltis at the start with a Leopard 1 command. Then to complement that I have two Lux recon units which are incredibly nice recon which are really reliable they have 20mm auto cannons, 15% accuracy and 1 HE power, but they have a really nice rate of fire of 300 rounds per minute. They're in amphibious as well and have a decent speed. Then we've got two M113A1Gs with Fliegerfaust 2s in them. We've got two Marder 1A2s with Panzer Grenadiers. So we've got four of those. And we have one KPZ-70 Kyla, a Black Panzer Gepard A1, and a BO-105M VBH. So this was ran up to the, to the bridge at the beginning to make sure that there wasn't enemy helicopters trying to cross over the river in this area. And then my recons heading up the push and getting into positions to help scout the front lines. So I'm going to keep one of the looks back and the other one's going to be pushing forwards towards the town. Now the reason I put him in the water here is so that he has chance to have the KPZ Kyler catch up to him and then we'll also have the looks not being in line of sight of the enemy while he's in the water because of the way that the land is shaped. So it allows him to push up to the town without being spotted. Now meanwhile over on the left 
Seagull One's done a really good job of getting some Jaegers up into Hotel, which has managed to snipe one of the enemy's UAZs. Meanwhile, on the left, because of that distraction, Wong has managed to push Fernspa and some Milan 2 squads and Legion 90s all the way over into Juliet, which is really, really good for us because that means that we've already secured the other side of the river, giving us a way to push over. The enemy stopped short with their MI-8Ts and you can see they probably dropped off their infantry into these towns here. But because I haven't necessarily spotted anything yet with my looks, I've seen units moving into the town obviously, but um, nothing too threatening which has allowed me to start to push over the Marder 1A2s. Now on this side of the river we have the KPZ-70 Kyler providing a base of fire while the Lux is waiting here to reveal enemy infantry that may be on this side. So I've got my Marder 1A2s into position and the enemy starts to charge me with some BTR-80s and some BTR-70s. This gives my Marder 1A2s some nice targets for their Milan F1s. And therefore they take advantage of that, managing to get a couple of APC kills. Now while the Mardo 182s have secured the beachhead, we are now pushing up a Panzer Grenadiers that have unloaded from the Mardo 182 previously. The reason I bought them over separately was so that the infantry squads didn't die inside the APCs if they got destroyed, and therefore I decided to bring them across the bridge afterwards. Turns out there's enemy HGMs sitting in this tree line, form of BTR-90 here, and that manages to snipe my Lux Recon and one of my Marder 1A1s. And now I'm trying to get my Panzer Grenadiers up into the town where they bump into uh, Spetsnaz squads. I've got my M113 A1G APCs here with their MG3s to help out against these Spetsnaz. And I've, I've also brought up the KPZ-70 Kyler that was covering from the other side of the river so that I can provide more firepower to the front lines. This basically allows me to stay in machine gun range of the Spetsnaz while we take out the squad. Now something that I was talking about with the weakness of a Spetsnaz squad is the fact that if you keep them at machine gun range then they generally won't be able to harm your troops as much as they would if you are in their rocket range and assault rifle range. In this case, because it was just Spetsnaz, I decided to push forwards with the M113s to see if the Spetsnaz squad was still in this compound. Turns out they weren't, and instead the Morskaya Pehota squads that I spotted earlier have now moved forwards. So I'm currently juggling infantry squads against Hot Rod 525, who's trying to outmaneuver my Panzer Grenadiers and keep his men out of the line of sight of my tanks and APCs while trying to kill my infantry. So, so I don't lose a Panzer Grenadier squad here, I do retreat them. And I leave my two fully replenished Panzer Grenadier squads to fire onto the Moscow Pehota. The enemy brings in a MiG 17F. Unfortunately, the Black Panzer Gepard doesn't get enough shots to get rid of that. So the bombs do land on my Panzer Grenadiers and bring them down to six men. Meanwhile though, I've managed to push my KPZ-70 Kyler up on the left, which has forced him to push his Moskaias back. Now this gives me a chance to retreat, and it's something that not enough people do in this game, and it's one reason I chose this game to show you today. There's a lot of things that, although this game is not necessarily the most interesting overall game, there's a lot of specific things that I can show off. So for instance, the first thing was the Spets, the Spets now strategy coming into play. And here, now I've got my troops retreating. 
And the enemy brings in a rocket barrage, and I was really scared that this would hit my low health Panzer Grenadier squads, but I got pretty lucky as they were trying to retreat. And the reason I am retreating now is obviously because they're on low health, and rather than giving the enemy lots of points for free, I may as well try and bring them back and resupply them and rearm them. And that way they can be a lot more effective. We can charge across the bridge again and try again once I've regrouped. So while I've taken points off the enemy, I'm not giving any back because I'm deciding to retreat my forces to a place where they can repair. So now I've got my Marder 1A2 rolling back over the bridge as well. I'm keeping these two Marder 1A2s hidden though in this tree line here to make sure that we have sort of a base of cover on the other side of the bridge in case I need it. But now the enemy is bringing in MiG 17Fs again and managed to shoot down one there. The second one is targeted by my Flak Panzer Gepard and the Fliegerfaust, but does unfortunately get away from Jumpy's ADATs. Fortunately for me, although they take down the Panzer Grenadier squads to only four men, they both survive. So they didn't get any points out of those bombing runs and they lost a plane for it. Now meanwhile on the left we still have Seeger 1 in a challenging position for the enemy in Hotel. We've also got Wall securing the left flank with some recon in the form of the B-105 and the Fernspa. Then we've got the Legion here with the PLR Milan 2s covering this little area here and he's basically trying to make room for him to advance and now is moving forward with his Fernspa to recon the left side. Unfortunately for the enemy Charles Murray does surrender at this point in the game and I'm not exactly sure why because over on the left Viper 2-1 is the one challenging Seeger 1 and Wall with that push and in the middle I am challenging Hot Rod 525 so maybe it's the player on the right that was originally controlling those units. Yeah it looks like Viper's taken control of Charles Murray's forces after he left the game. However there is still quite a lot of enemy troops on the map as you can see. Either way at this point you can see that I'm bringing up my CH-53G which is a very expensive resupply helicopter that has a lot of supplies in it and this is now going to be used to bring up both all four of my Panzer Grenadier squads back up to strength alongside my Marder 1A2 being rearmed and I'm also going to repair my KPZ-70 Kyla with it. Once they are repaired and rearmed I can then think about using them to attack into Echo or maybe even towards Hotel. So fortunately due to Seeger 1's disruption at the start of the game the enemy is incredibly worried about pushing over on the left side. Now this has meant that they are focusing on Seeger 1 which is really really good for us. It means that Wall is managing to just push up for free and take over all the strategic positions on the left side of the map even though if the enemy did contest him here they would easily be able to crush his legion squads on their own. A couple of like light tanks or maybe even medium tanks would be able to destroy these Legion 90 squads on their own. Furthermore, they could have used helicopters on that side due to there being no significant anti-aircraft. Sieg 1's making good use of the F-15D Eagle here to bomb the site where the Estrella 10M was. Unfortunately, he does miss the majority of the forces there but then makes up for it later with another bombing strike. And while this is all going on over the left, I have been maintaining my F4F KWS in the sky to provide air superiority for this side because there isn't actually any AA for wall. So I decided to bring over my aircraft there to make sure that they couldn't 
target him with any bombers. But although this may seem like an uninteresting game where we're just steamrolling the enemy at this time, it's pretty interesting to see how I managed to push across into this middle sector of Echo and then up towards their base after hitting Hotel. So while Seagull One's using his Jaeger squads to push back Hot Rod on the left here, Osama is using his artillery to constantly harass Seagull One from actually quite short range. I'm building up another attack on the left now using Marder 182s and a Marder VTSI. This is going to be accompanied by a SPPZ looks and the FRP Roland 3. I'm also moving over a KPZ 70 Kyler and my Flak Panzer Gepard A1 to complement that push. Now, the idea of this was where Seeger 1 has controlled the left side properly. I'm pretty sure that there is unlikely to be a large amount of troops contesting this bridge so it's allowing me to get my troops into a better position to roll across and capture echo meanwhile though i have to be careful that there, that there isn't any infantry or troops in this compound so moving over my b105 recon helicopter now see if i can see anything that might be useful dropping out my panzer grenadiers here to avoid them from being destroyed by the HGM when they're inside the APC. And now I'm moving forwards the Amada 1A2 after he's destroyed that BTR-90 with the Amada VTSI to contest this town. Now knowing that the BTR-90 was there, there's obviously going to be some infantry and now I spotted some BTR-80As as well. So using the long range of the Amada VTSI and the Marder 1A2, I start to target those APCs. So this is just a small push I've got going on at the moment. My Panzer Grenadier is now moving up to this town. My Kyler is there. The VTSI is there. My Lux is there. So we've got all the recon we need. Seeger 1 comes in with his Aardvark and the eagle to bomb the crap out of this forest which helps me out quite a lot with this small push into this town now I've bumped into some more sky of the so I'm taking care of them using the KPZ-70 Kyla and the support of the Marta VTSI cannon The Marder 1A2 is pushing or attacking them from a longer range with their auto cannon, so is the Lux. Meanwhile, we have the Gephard targeting a MiG 23BN, and we managed to shoot that down nicely. And now two MiG 17s come in once again to bomb us, but I see them coming. And while I managed to shoot down one of them with my F4FKWS, I actually managed to dodge the bombs as well by moving forwards my KPZ-70 Kyler, my Lux and my Marder-182. Unfortunately, the VTSI got destroyed. And now the enemy is bringing up some BTR-70s. So I'm trying to get my Panzer Grenadiers into a better position to take those out. Turns out the enemy has just decided to bring up some Igler squads, which are a bit late due to the bombing strike already turning up and therefore those Igla squads die for free and so do the APCs that go with them. So Hot Rod's now left the game and we are going to be continuing our push towards Foxtrot. I've seen this KPZ T-72 coming up the road. The only thing I know that can destroy it that I've got on, on hand is the KPZ-70 Kyler. So I'm counting on this to take it out. And the KPZ-70 Kyler does have 16 AP power so it should be able to shoot one shot it from this short range. 
and thankfully after taking a shot to the front armour and the help of the Marder 102 and the KBZ-70's auto cannon, we managed to kill the T-72 no problem. Now while we're being arted by this PHL, luckily we have some artillery of our own in the form of these AS-90's of jumpies taking a counter battery roll to destroy the enemy artillery units. Something that's really underused in this game is counter artillery and it actually really helped us out in this game to get rid of the annoying rocket artillery that was panicking our troops when we were trying to attack. So it's something again that I would recommend from this game. These long range artillery units like AS-90s or even Caesars they're very very good at pinpoint arting enemy artillery. So make sure that you make good use of that whenever you can. Now one thing that the enemy could have done a lot better is the use of radar AA. Now even though we probably had the correct aircraft like seed aircraft to take care of them it's still important that the enemy makes use of them. The use of radar AA is seriously underrated at the moment. Especially with the buffs to the seed aircraft. So seed aircraft at the moment are really really strong. They have high ECM and they have really accurate missiles that can take out radar AA. Obviously if you keep your radar AA turned off they are completely ineffective. And by doing that and having enough of them you can turn off your AA, turn it back on and just utterly destroy your enemy. In this case Wall's Tornado ECR nearly gets shot down by infrared AA and if there was a mix of radar AA in there then they likely would have got the kill because they would have been able to turn it off and then turn it back on again while the infrared AA was still attacking which sounds hard to do and probably is until you get used to it but it's definitely worth doing. So now with the help of Jumpy and his smoke he's pushing up his own Fusiliers and Centurion Mark V's to attack into this town. With him doing that, I'm going to push up my own KPZ-70 Kyler now, and I'm using the Marder 1A2s as fire support. KPZ-70 Kylers firing from long range, and the bombs from Wall are managing to destroy those squads very successfully. Now after he put the smoke in, he also used the AS-90s to RT the town. And that turned out very very successful. On the left side here Viper's Sapery are being targeted by Jumpy's Coyote and my Marder 1A2's. Jumpy's now finishing off the last of the Moskaya Pejota in the town. Viper's got a couple of nicely placed Igla squads here which managed to shoot down one of Jumpy's AH-7s before he manages to unload his infantry squad. Fortunately, before the enemy's BTR manages to kill my Marda 1A2s, my KPZ-70 Kyla comes to the rescue. So now I'm sending over my Marder 1A2 that has been badly damaged to the left side where I've now brought up a CH-53G in order to repair, refuel and rearm my forces that originally pushed up to this area here. Unfortunately, due to the lack of recon now at the top of this town, an APC does manage to kill the leftover Marder 1A2, but the same vehicle is not able to penetrate the KPZ-70 Kyler from that range. Got my F4F in the sky again, 
and it helps Wall and his Rafale to shoot down the enemy J72M, which is another good kill for our team. So now as you can see we are preparing for the final push onto Foxtrot. I've got my units moving forwards from this town. We managed to spot a PGZ there which does get destroyed. These PGZ 80s being used by the enemy to try and shoot down our aircraft although they aren't very effective at all. The trouble is with these guys is that they do have 2,800 meters range against helicopters but only 1,750 meter range versus airplanes and airplanes are the majority of what we're using at the moment which is why they are not as effective as they probably should be. Although one thing that's really nice about the PGZ-80s is they do have six front armor and that can make them very useful as a supportive role when pushing forwards heavy tanks. Now I did want to capture this FOB but Sega one wanted to destroy it so using his hardvark he blows the crap out of that FOB and I managed to just about shoot the HQ7 with my KPZ-70 Kyler before the bombing strike lands. Now all the time that we've been pushing over on this left side, I've completely disregarded the fact that the enemy has been contesting the sector of Echo. If we go to the neutral perspective, you can see that the enemy still controls a command unit in this area. And I'm just about realising now when Jumpy is pushing forward his Gurkhas that this is the case. Now using the Kyla we destroy a few more units. And Sega One's Raven's not having a very good day because the enemy isn't using any radar AA and therefore is being stunned by enemy auto cannon AA. Managed to shoot down one aircraft there with the use of my Roland 3 and the Gephard A1. And with this fast push of the KPZ T55As and the ZTZ 59I, they actually managed to kill my KPZ 70 Kyler because they hit it with a cluster bomb strike and also my Marder 1A2. Sega one's using his Hornets to take out more ground forces. And I'm now waiting for these T-55As to find and possibly destroy my looks, although I was hoping that the looks would be able to kill them. Unfortunately, on the way back from this forest, the Roland 3 does get attacked by the Sapri of Viper 2 1, and therefore I do lose that unit unnecessarily to the enemy. A bombing strike from Sega 1's Eagle does mean that those two T 55As don't last very long, and it's just about leaves my looks alive. And now we finally spotted the command vehicle. It's all hands on deck to go and destroy that. Walls 1DS comes in and bombs the crap out of it. And I'm now moving forward with my KPZ-70 Kyla and the Marder 1A2 to sweep through the rest of this compound. So Echo is finally ours and I've got some more reinforcements coming up on the left here. With this Leopard 1 being used to capture Hotel and the KPZ-70 Kyla and the Marder 1A3 with Deccan's grouper in them are moving up to support the push into Foxtrot after I lost my KPZ-70 Kyla here and the Marder 1A2. Now one thing I've got to point out about this small push here 
was that although I did have good reason to just push up forwards uh, to their base and, and try and destroy as many units as possible, I should have really been more wary of their air units and kept my Roland in a place that it had more chance to fire. Because with my Roland 3 sitting in this forest here and the Flak Panzer Gepard A1 right next to it, it wasn't the best place to have AA when I was pushing in that sort of position. It left my both my armor units were actually really vulnerable. And the use of Jumpy's SAS there and my FRP Roland 3 manages means we managed to shoot down that enemy aircraft. And now on the right, Jumpy's pushing forwards with Royal Marines against Osama's Zanshi in Charlie. Jumpy's also making use of these Centurion Mark V ones. And a little tip, these are probably one of the most overpowered cheap tanks you can get in the game. They only cost 15 points and they have 9 front armour. It's actually ridiculous. So something that you should probably have on any of your All Nations decks. They are extremely good screening tanks for heavy tanks. Jumpy's brought up his Lynx A87s here and is dealing as much damage as possible to the infantry units in support of his Royal Marines. And now with Seagull 1 managing to get squads of Jaegers into this town. I'm pushing up my looks ahead of the rest of my forces to get some recon information before I bring up my reinforcements, which are the Model 183 that I was talking about and my new KPZ-70 Kyla. And these are pushing forward with the Panzer Grenadiers and now being repaired from being in this town. And they are pushing forwards alongside two brand spanking new Leopard 2A1s, which are the heaviest tanks that I have on my deck. I'm bringing over also my units from the right side and creating a nice big combined push to finish off the enemy in Foxtrot. So at this point, we are 5,375 points to the enemy's 1,625. But I'm actually incredibly happy that the enemy didn't all surrender. This is of course still only two players playing against us now, a summer and Viper 2-1. And I must commend them for <laughs> continuing this game as long as they did and putting up a fight as long as they did. Unfortunately, Ziga 1's push at the start really set the tone for this game. Uh, him managing to cause the disruption and, and kill the CV in Hotel really put us in a commanding position to win this game. So although a lot of you will complain that this was maybe a rollover or maybe I was, we were playing against noobs, in fact a lot of the time a little strategy at the beginning of the game can cause the rest of the game to steamroll, which was exactly what happened in this case. So let's just go through the strategy. Seagull 1 hit Hotel from the start of the game with some reasonably fast helicopters. He managed to drop off his infantry and secure that fast enough to destroy any reinforcements that came there by land. This cut off the enemy from getting to Juliet which allowed Wall to secure that and push freely up the left side of the map. Now although he bumped into a Viper 2-1 along the way, it wasn't as hard as it probably would have been because Sega 1 had provided that disruption already. Now, because of that, it made my life easier. I had a better position to attack from into an Echo. And by securing this area here, we now had a position also to push on to Foxtrot. And while we were doing this, this is cutting off all of these extra reinforcement points from the enemy which is therefore snowballing it even further. We're getting more points, the enemy's getting less points. And therefore, inherently, we have better units because we can afford 
good aircraft, good tanks, good infantry, expensive infantry, and with that last bombing strike from the air units there, we managed to secure the victory by hitting the points limit. So a 31 minute and 39 second game there. You can see that Sega 1 finished the game very well on 1,945 kills to 495 losses. Easily the MVP of this game due to that beginning move. Myself, I only got 1,215 kills to 415 losses. 1,270 kills for Wall, 1,585 for Jumpy. Unfortunately, due to Charles Murray and Hot Rod 525 leaving, it did leave Viper 2-1 and Osama a bit tits up. But either way, I think they put up a really good fight and provided actually a really interesting game that I think a few tips came out of. So, first things first, we had the tip about the Spetsnaz. Um, using your own infantry from max range with the machine guns, using supporting troops with auto cannons and main guns, very, very powerful against Spetsnaz. Then I had the talk about using the artillery to counter battery enemy artillery. And that is a very underused tactic. We also had the fact that Sega 1 pushed his helicopter infantry into that town at the start of the game, which caused a snowball effect, something to take note of. And then also the importance of retreating weakened units that you know that you can get back to a supply vehicle in order to repair, rearm, and so on. You can see that some of my Marder 1A2s got a lot of kills. We've got the one Marder 1A2 here getting a BTR 90 kill, BTR 70 kill, whilst Guy a Hotter 90 unit, T72 kill, two PGZ 80 kills. We got the KPZ 70 Kyler getting a few nice kills, a Panzer Grenadier squad killing a couple of Igla Ns and the BTRs that they came in, a Sapri squad. Really nice there. This KPZ 70 Kyler doing even better. Conkers, HQ7, BMP2C, We've got a Spetsnaz VMF squad, Mertschutzen squad. So yeah, a couple of nice hero units there. But I know it wasn't the most exciting game. But I wanted to keep up the fact that I am going to be doing war game videos every other day from now on. So if the videos or games are of lesser quality, that would be why. Either way, I don't think this was a bad quality game. It just showed some good strategy that worked for our team. Now, of course, I do know Sega 1, but we don't ever use TeamSpeak. So there isn't really a communication bonus for us playing together. It's just that Sega 1 and Wall are both very good players. So anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Hope you learned something. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.